In this video, we're going to look at one final example, how to find the resultant of two forces. And this time we have two forces, a 95.9 .9 Newton force at a bearing of 242 degrees and a 35.6 Newton force at a bearing of 286 degrees. In the top left hand corner, I've also added a small diagram as a reminder of our conventions, where zero degrees is at three o'clock on a clock face and the angles or bearings are measured in the anti-clockwise direction. So I'm going to begin by adding a dashed horizontal line because what I need to do is turn each of these forces into triangles such that I can find the X and Y component of each force. So for our 95.9 Newton force, we have a right angle triangle here. And for our 35.6 Newton force, we have a right angle triangle here. The next thing I need to do is define the angles inside of these triangles. So I need to find this angle here and I need to find this angle here. I need these angles in order to do trigonometry. So the 95.9 Newton force is on a bearing of 242 degrees. That's 242 degrees measured from three o'clock on the clock face going round to here. That gives us the direction of that force. So in order to find the angle enclosed inside the triangle, I need to do 242 minus 180, because there's 180 degrees on a straight line on this section here. So 242 minus 180 is 62 degrees. So I can add that to my diagram. Next, I have my 35.6 Newton force at a bearing of 286 degrees. That means from three o'clock on the clock face or here, the angle round to here is 286 degrees. Now recall that one complete revolution is 360 degrees. Therefore, the angle enclosed inside that triangle is going to be 360 degrees, which is one full revolution, minus the 286. So 360 minus 286 is 74 degrees. So now I have the information that I need on each of those triangles. Next I need to determine which components of these forces are positive and which components of these forces are negative. So I'm going to call the 95.9 Newton force, force number one, and we can see that force number one has an X component that's negative because it goes from right to left. And it has a Y component that's also negative because it goes from top to bottom. If we look at our second force, the 35.6 Newton force, we can see that it has an X component that's positive because this time the force goes left to right. But it has a Y component that's negative going from top to bottom. So now we're in a position where we can find the X and Y components of each of those forces. If we look at force one as an example, we know the longest side of that triangle is the hypotenuse. We know the side opposite the angle is the opposite. And we know that the remaining side is the adjacent. So to find the X component of force one, or F1X, we need to find the adjacent of that triangle. Well, the adjacent of a triangle is hypotenuse cos theta. And in this case, our hypotenuse is 95.9 and our angle theta is 62 degrees. Therefore, F1x is 95.9 cos 62, which is 45.02. And we've already said that that x component of force 1 is negative. Next, we'll find F1y. Well, the y component of that force is the opposite on the triangle. So this time it's going to be 95.9 sine 62, which is 84.67. And once again, we've already said that that y component's negative. Let's move on to force two. And first of all, we're going to find the x component. Once again, we can label the triangle. The hypotenuse is the longest side. The opposite is opposite the angle, and the adjacent is the other shorter side. So our x component, once again, is the adjacent. So we've got f2x equals hypotenuse, 35.6, cos 
cos of the angle, 74, which equals 9.81 newtons. Now this time, the x component of the force is positive. And finally, we can find F2y, which is the opposite on the triangle. So 35.6 sine of the angle, or sine of 74 degrees, which gives us 34.22 newtons. And once again, we know that that's negative. So the next step in this problem is to find the x component of the resultant and the y component of the resultant. So we've got frx, which is f1x plus f2x. All we're doing is adding the x components of the other two forces together. f1x, we've already said, is minus 45.02. And f2x is plus 9.81, giving us an x component for the resultant force of minus 35.21. Once again, the sign there, the minus, is important. And now we can find the y component of the resultant, which is the two y components added together. So f1y is minus 84.67 and F2Y is minus 34.22 and that gives us minus 118.89 newtons. So we have the two components that we need to define our resultant force. So I've just removed some of the information from the page there so that we can keep all of the key information in one place. And what I'm going to do now is define the resultant force and then I'm going to define the equilibrium force. So the resultant force has an x component of minus 35.21. So the x component is minus, so it's going backwards, 35.21 newtons. And it has a y component of minus 118.89. Minus means going downwards. 118.89 newtons. And our resultant force is going to connect the start to the end. That's our resultant force, R. We can find the magnitude of the resultant using Pythagoras, such that the resultant equals the square root of the sum of the square of the two shortest sides. So the square root of the sum of the square of the two shorter sides, 118.89 squared plus 35.21 squared. And that will give us the magnitude of our resultant force. And by running that through our calculators, we get a resultant force of 123.99 newtons. And finally, we need to define our angle. Now we're going to define our angle as a bearing. So the bearing is going to be this angle from 3 o'clock on the clock face all the way round to our resultant force line. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find the angle inside the triangle here, which I'm going to call thigh. And once we've got angle thigh, we can add 180 to that, and that will give us the bearing. So the angle thigh then using trigonometry is tan to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent. If we look at our triangle, opposite is the side that's opposite the angle, so the 118.89, and the adjacent is the other shorter side. So tan to the minus 1 of opposite 118.89 over adjacent 35.21 is going to give us that angle thigh. So the angle thigh is 73.50 degrees. Therefore, the angle that we're trying to find, theta, which is the bearing, theta is 180 plus 73.50. Theta equals 180 plus thigh, which equals 180 plus 73.50 which is 253.50 degrees. 
So now I can write my first summary line, which states that the resultant equals the magnitude 123.99 at an angle of 253.50 degrees. Next, we need to look at our equilibrium force. Now, please recall that the equilibrium force is equal in size but opposite in direction to our resultant. So that line there represents the equilibrium force. So we can write our first part of the statement, the equilibrium force equals, or the magnitude's the same, 123.99 newtons, but we know that the direction is opposite to the resultant. And in fact, the angle that we're trying to determine on the diagram is this angle here, the bearing. Now you may have seen previously that alternate angles are equal. And by alternate angles, we mean this angle thigh here and this angle that we're trying to find are equal. They're enclosed by two parallel lines here and here. So those two angles are going to be the same. What that means is the bearing of our equilibrium force is the same as angle thigh, which we determined earlier as 73.50 degrees. Therefore, the equilibrium is 123.99 newtons at an angle of 73.50 degrees. There is another way of looking at this, though. If we know our resultant acts in this direction, and we know our equilibrium acts in the opposite direction, we know that there's a 180 degree difference between those two angles. So what we can do is either add or subtract 180 degrees from the angle of the resultant. And we're looking for the solution that sits between zero and 360 degrees because our bearings are measured zero to 360 degrees. So in this case, we would take our 253.50, the angle of the resultant. We would subtract 180 from it rather than adding 180 because if we add 180, it will take us over 360. So we subtract 180 and that brings us to the angle of our equilibrium of 73.50. So we can either use what we know about alternate angles or we can use what we know here about the resultant and the equilibrium being 180 degrees different from each other.